Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you'll remember that I have said before that many ITX components, and therefore all many ITX builds made from secondhand components, are difficult. The reason being is that number one, they're scarce on the secondary market, and number two, they carry a price premium at retail that carries over to the secondary market once they start to change hands. As a result, I very rarely put together a mini ITX system, but that's gonna change today, as I got one ready to go for you. But anyway, let's get to the part list and I'll tell you why this build is interesting. First of all, we have, uh, as you see before you, the skeleton of an SG-05 from Silverstone that I picked up for $30 by itself. It did have a fan installed, but I've actually swapped it out for another one simply because it was kind of dirty and I figured I'd just clean it later and use it for another build. Along with the case, we have a slimline optical drive that was already installed in this case that I will not be hooking up, as you can see here in the drive cage. Um, because that's just extra cables that I don't need because who fucking cares about optical drives at all. But I'm leaving it in there so it fills the gap at the front of the case that was left behind. Up here on my desk, out of sight right now, but I'll break it down so you can see it. We have the motherboard, RAM, and CPU combo. This is, uh, what's the model number of this fucking thing? The ooh, F2A88XM... XN dash Wi Fi. I, I paid 50 bucks for this board, which is probably a little higher than I would have liked. This 8 gigabyte stick of RAM, one solitary stick, I've got here populated in the second slot because the first one is a little bit obstructed. You could fit a low profile stick in there, but I didn't even bother. I'm just going to go with the one stick of eight. Uh, th that was $20. And the CPU under the hood, which I can't show you, of course, is an AMD FX770K. 770K. You might be asking yourself, what the fuck is a 770K? Well, that's what's kind of interesting about this video and why I decided to put it all together. It's an OEM CPU. It's basically a Kaveri CPU with the, uh, the onboard graphics disabled, much like the Athlon 860K, 870K, 880K. It's just clocked a little bit lower, a touch lower. And I picked it up for a whopping 40 Canadian dollars and I always wanted to play with one of these uh, which is the reason why I picked it up and just decided you know what we'll see what we can do with it next up in the part list we got ourselves what I felt was an appropriately powered graphics card for that CPU and that is the EVGA 660 Ti yes I know I'm pairing an Nvidia card with a AMD CPU which is like pure fucking sacrilege but I actually couldn't find like a 270 or 270x to put in this build uh, and this is comparable, it will do the job, it will be good for 1080p gaming, even though Kepler is kind of being left behind driver-wise, still very capable, and a uh, very clean looking card too, and will, will most of all fit in this case, just ever so fucking barely, if my measurements are correct. And I paid $60 for this for the record. Now this case requires small form factor power supplies, and this is where a lot of the money comes in here. You usually don't find them this cheap, but I got myself a fully loaded 450 watt Silverstone SFX power supply. Picked it up for 45 Canadian dollars, which is absurd for this size of power supply. Usually power supplies this small, are a lot more expensive. As for storage, which I believe is the last component for the build that I have not yet covered, we have one of my standard stash Intel 180 gigabyte 520 series SSDs, which I picked up for $30 a unit. And this of course is one of them. Uh, this is gonna be the only storage in this build that I will have. Yes, I know 180 gigabytes is not a lot, but considering this is sort of meant to be a dink box and you aren't gonna have more than like one or two games installed at any given time, it should still be enough. Anyway, let's get to work. First thing we gotta do, how to put the drive in this fucking case. If you've never built in the SG-05, I guess this, that can be the lesson for today. You'll notice all the challenges of the SG05 as we go and there are definitely many that you should prep for before going in so the SSD slides into here but I have to oh oh it's still dusty in there some guys fucking jizz dust in here I mean I know you typically don't shoot dust out of your dick when you jizz but anyway if you've ever worked in the SG05 before you'll know that you can leave just two screws in and of course the SSD will be fine the nice thing about SSDs is that it doesn't really matter if they move around a little bit but if you're anal, like me, what you essentially have to do is find a long neck screwdriver like this. This comes with Noctua coolers. And I can't even do this on camera. I'm, I'm trying to, guys, but it's hard because what you have to do is essentially line the screw up in the hole with your thumb and finger like this and then pass the fucking screwdriver through it, catch it on the inside, and then line it up with the hole without dropping it like I just did. Okay, 
Looks like I got one threaded. Yay, I succeeded. So I'm gonna take this off and put it aside. And then that gives us a nice open space to work in here. So the first thing I guess I'll do is put the IO shield in. That seems to be a sensible thing to do. I just tried to put this in backwards. Why did I do that? Standoffs are pre-installed in this case. Takes the guesswork out of it, nothing wrong with that. Oh, it's being stubborn. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use my skinny screwdriver for this one. Thank you, people at Noxua. I would let you people fuck my sister if I had one. Not that I could tell her to do anything, really. My sister's really independent, in my mind. But I'm just saying I'd recommend the Noxua people for fucking, if she were real. But she's not. So I guess she could be one of your girlfriends, huh? <laughs> Okay, I think the next sensible insertion would be the graphics card at this point. Okay, now the unfortunate reality of this card is that the card is coming into contact with the edge of the cooler. But the cooler is all plastic, so it's not like it's conductive. I think we should be okay, as long as it lines up with the screw holes, which it does. Alright, let's go to connect some cables now, see where we can route everything comfortably. You know what makes recording videos really easy, by the way? When you're really, really used to talking to yourself. Alright, I think all the rest of these cables are in a prime position to be connected. Let's put the 24 pin in and then screw the power supply in. I hate, by the way, 20 plus four pin connectors instead of just a solid 24. Nobody fucking makes 20 pin connectors anymore. Nobody. Why would you leave the detachable four pins on the end? You fucking retard. Just make it a goddamn 24 pin connector. Gives me another element of fucking fat fingerness to account for because your goddamn stupidity. Oh, I had it backwards. <laughs> Well, that's my stupidity. While we have the space, we start to tie down cables. So a good tip for the SGO5 is to use the 24 pin cable, which is pretty solid as your anchor, and then grab all the other cables and start building sort of a primary cable nest on the side here, which is the only real space you have other than the front. And the thing with this power supply is that the cables are really short, so you're not going to be uh, in a position to sort of line them along the front. Remember, the key to good cable management is just to ensure that shit don't move. These cables just suspended in midair, tucked underneath the power supply, aren't going anywhere. Once I've got this case closed, it's case closed. One more zip tie ought to do it. That bunch of cables right there. Seems like a good candidate. Oh, I have a visitor. I'll be back. Aha! Just made a sale, bitches! Bought an R9-390X for 200 bucks and I sold it for 240 three days later. Called a quick flip, bitch! So now it's just SATA cable, which is stuck down here, and SATA power, which is draped conveniently around here. We're going to connect them first, and then screw the drive cage into place. Oh. Yeah, there we go. One screw's going in. It's going in. No, it's not. Not in. The last bit of cable management here. We have one zip tie left, which is good. All we gotta do is do some squeezing in, and then hope to fuck that everything works. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Small form factor gorgeousness. Okay, we do have some benchmarks for you as well. Grand Time Spy got a 1590 on the GPU, a 1655 on the CPU for an overall all of 1599. Fire Strike was a 5929 score on the GPU and a 4203 on the CPU and a combined of 1960 for an overall of 4690. No real surprises there. Shadow of Mordor came in with an average of 57 frames per second on very high, which is impressive, with a minimum of 44, so perfectly playable there. But the footage I want you to see, of course, here is with The Witcher 3, and forgive my capture card, for some reason it came out kind of grainy. I'm going to have to look into that. Anyway, it's uh, it runs, obviously, as you can see. We get between 40 and 50 frames per second, and the GPU-CPU balance seems to be adequate with the settings on low, but it ain't gonna go no higher than that, which is a testament to not only how strong and demanding of a game that The Witcher 3 is, but to the age of the system and where you can expect its performance to sort of end. I would be interested in the future to compare this to my $86 shitbox, and maybe that is coming up next, but uh, this might be out the door before I can test it some more. Uh, needless Needless to say, there was a bit of CPU bottlenecking from time to time when the settings were higher, but if you put draw distance down and the number of characters that can appear on the screen at once, it usually brings it down to more sane levels. And uh, if you watch this footage, you might see one or two cores peaking at 100% from time to time, but generally speaking, not too bad considering the GPU doesn't appear to dip all that much. So everything's kind of being taxed to its maximum in this scenario and getting the most out of the hardware that we can get, although we couldn't obtain that magical 60 frames per second 
at any point during our little run. So there you have it, bitches. Proof of concept. You can indeed make a mini ITX system from completely used components for under 300 Canadian dollars and have it perform pretty much okay. Although obviously for that kind of money, we probably could have done better if we were building full size. So again, I would still not recommend it if you really need under the TV kind of performance at that kind of price, you really should be just getting a big box and hiding it behind your cabinet or some shit. Tiny is not very easy to do and it took me quite some time to procure all those parts and I do a lot of business in the secondhand market so keep that in mind if you're going to go on your own similar venture. Anyhow I hope you guys liked the new intro. People were complaining that it was just generally too loud and they didn't really care about the disgusting elements so I accommodated them the best I can and made a nice whisper burp. Follow me on Twitter, share, like, subscribe, send new whatever you want to do to support me I'm happy to take anyhow once again thanks for watching guys and go masturbate